This is about spaghetti working as a waveguide for sound. You might think that sound would not go through spaghetti. In fact, that seems quite obvious. With a piece of metal, when you tap it, it makes a noise. And another noise when you drop it. Tap a piece of spaghetti, no noise. OK, now let's think about it. Spaghetti, rice noodles, agar, gelatin and most water-based gels are 60 to 98% water and sound does travel through water. For example, ultrasound from sonar will travel 100 metres through water, whale songs travel hundreds of kilometres and waves, which are just another mode of vibration, can travel across an ocean. So, as spaghetti is mostly water, it seems sound should travel through spaghetti. This movie shows that it does. Admittedly, there is some sound absorption, so to make this easy, the lengths of spaghetti used here are just 20 centimetres long. Spaghetti is our vehicle to show the proof of principle that sound can pass through a gel. There are two reasons that we want to send sound through gels. Both of them are for the development of microfluidic systems. Microfluidic devices are currently being developed as cell sensors, where samples are processed and identified on one device. The cells need to be moved around the devices, and ultrasound standing waves provide a good solution. They have a traction force, which can move cells to the nodes. Our first reason to use gels for microfluidic systems is that they are easy to functionalise. That means all sorts of chemicals can be added. They are also flexible, biodegradable, low cost, easy to make into any shape, extrude, mould, even cut with a laser. And if it's spaghetti, you can eat the device if you want to. Our second reason is that walls made of gel are almost like walls made of water. With no reflection on the inner wall, we may be able to design systems with very good resonances. We can't see sound in spaghetti, but vibrations in spaghetti can make waves on water. Actually, we can't see those very well either. But look to the left, the wave shadows are quite easy to see. With the spaghetti in the centre we get a symmetrical wave pattern. If we move off centre the pattern changes. This sound is going through the spaghetti. Now if we put powder on the water, this is cocoa powder, we can see acoustic streaming. You have to look carefully near the tip of the spaghetti and you can see streaming in loops focused around the tip. Streaming only happens at some frequencies. At this frequency, the wavelength on the water surface is about the same as the diameter of the spaghetti. Audible frequencies are very noisy and they form surface waves with wavelengths so short that they're hard to see. So now, jumping from 60 hertz to near 1 megahertz, we're going to produce ultrasound with a nebulizer. These mist makers are probably one of the cheapest ultrasound sources available. Placing kitchen film over the glass stops the water escaping, but lets the sound come through. When the spaghetti is in contact with the film, sound goes into the spaghetti. Placing a droplet containing a suspension of yeast at the end of the spaghetti 
ultrasound, which has passed along the spaghetti, comes into the droplet and drives the cells to the standing wave nodes. Waves are reflected from all the droplet surfaces, so these nodes form a complex pattern. Most microfluidic chambers are made of glass, silicon or plastic. A spaghetti wave guide can transfer sound into these chambers. Here a glass capillary tube is used as an example chamber. Using a microscope you can see the cells move very quickly to the nodes. Finally, this is a microfluidic channel with walls made of agrose dyed red. At 1 MHz, yeast cells move to the nodes. The nodes don't follow the curve of the weakly reflective duct wall. Their alignment follows the perimeter of the gel. We hope you agree. Spaghetti does conduct sound and gel can be used to make acoustofluidic circuits. Thank you for watching.